Lizette, who is the real beneficiary from the deal? You know, I think both of them would say that they're beneficiaries, Taylor. Um, what IBM gets is a easy to use, they say it is an easy to use kind of graphical interface so that people throughout their organization can quickly and more easily ask questions, get the results they need using AI and then make decisions on it, right? So that's what they get. They get to extend their, um, what they already offer in the cloud data pack with AI software, okay? That's what they get. For Palantir, um, they get a chance to kind of uh, you know, not only expand their sales staff, right now they only have 30 salespeople um, and they get to use IBM's 2,500, uh, you know, sales staff devoted to this, but they also get a chance to kind of see whether this payday, whether this big R&D bet that they began over a year ago is going to pay off. So they get a chance mm. to explore that in real time. Going from 30 to 2,500, I can definitely see the focus there. I can also see the synergies because it sort of seems as though they're going for the same target market, right, Lizette? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, as you know, you know, Palantir has been around for 13, 14 years, co-founded by, you know, billionaire um, uh, Peter Thiel, and it got its start early in government. I mean, it, CIA was one of its first and most vocal customers. It later went into the... Department of Defense, of course, it's doing tons of work now, not just for the U.S. government to help distribute the vaccine via um, the Tiberia software program, but um, also, you know, throughout, you know, with the CDC, et cetera. What Palantir has fallen short on time and time and time again, and what they got hammered for, um, you know, for, for a long time, was the fact that they didn't have any commercial side of the business. And what they did have was pretty sparse. Um, you know, even last quarter, they only have 132 customers total, um, which is, is, is pretty small. So their target right now is to really beef up the commercial side of that business. It's almost half of their revenue right now, um, you yeah. know, as a whole, and, and really target these larger customers that IBM already has. Yeah, I thought that was the more interesting part of this, Lizette. And, I mean, obviously I could see why Palantir would want to cozy up with IBM. I am curious as to whether yeah. Palantir thinks they're going to be able to keep IBM at arm's length because at some point IBM is going to decide, well, maybe we can do this on our own. Uh, you know, that is a good question. Certainly something that I would predict that they worked out in their, their conversations. Apparently they've been working on this since about October. They've known each other for a long time. Um, they, they did not disclose the deal terms, unfortunately. Mm. Um, you know, and it, and, it, and it really comes down to, you know, whether, you know, um, IBM has the force in-house to develop something similar or whether they're going to continue to make good on this reseller agreement. Um, the um, yeah. head of their um, cloud pack and data service that's pushing this, Rob Thomas, said that he expects uh, half of all of their revenue to come through reseller agreements such as this, that they recognize that they can't build it in-house, um, you know, that it's going to have to come through reseller yeah. deals if they want their customers to, to dig into AI, which is where the future is.